All right, so the next thing we're gonna go over is the when statement. We have the when statement and we have the when expression, but we're gonna go over the when statement first. Now, this allows us to check multiple criterias and whatever criteria is passed first, that is what we run with. Now, to show an example of this, we're gonna create a hot or cold type of game where I'm gonna pre-select a number and we're gonna let the user know if they're hot or cold towards you know choosing the right value. Now, I already have a prompt that lets the user know to pick a number between one and 50, and we're gonna take in that value and we're gonna store it as a user number choice. Now, to create a when statement, we just use the keyword when, open up parentheses, and we pass in the user number choice. And then we just open up some brackets and now it's time to start writing some criteria. So the first criteria that I want to put is just a range. So the number that I want to pre-select is 30. So the range that you know I want to select first is 1 through 25, and that's gonna let the user know that they're cold. So we're gonna do in which Let's call it know that we want to ch first take this user number choice, which is just, you know, the number that the user specified between one and 50. And we want to see if it's in this range of numbers that we're about to specify. So one through 25 is the range that we're going to use to, you know, let the user know that they're codes. And we're going to take this user number choice to check if it's within this range. And if it is, then we'll print out and we have to use this arrow to you know if we have to use this arrow to let uh, Kotlin know that if it is within this criteria we wanted to run something specific so in this case we wanted to print out that you know it's it's code or you are code got the cap now the second range I want to do or the second criteria that I want to specify is 26 through 29. That means the user is very close, so that means they're hot. So I'm going to use this arrow to point to what it needs to run if that person is within that range. And I want to print out you are hot. Now, if they pick exactly 30, which is the pre-selected number, then we could just pa we could just put the exact number, and this would check if the user number choice is you know equal to 30. And if so, we just want to print out you are correct with a lot of exclamation points. Now we have the other side. Now if it's 31 to 35, or if it's in the range of 31 to 35, and these two dots you know, specify that there's a range. So this is the first number and this is the second number, 31 and everything in between to 35. And then if that is, if that number is within that range, then we'll print out you are hot. Got to put the quote you are hot and then the last range check is from 36 to 50 put the arrow if it's within 36 to 50 then you print out that you are codes one last thing is just like with the if statement, we can also have a fallback if it doesn't meet any of these criteria, and we can use an else. And then we use an arrow to specify what we want to do if it's none of these, if it passed none of these criteria. So in this case, we'll just print out doesn't apply. So let me just run this back. Doesn't apply. So we take the user number choice, which is the input of the user, which is a number or which should be a number between one through 50. If the number is within one through 25, then we print out you are cold. If the number is between 26 to 29, you are hot. If it's equal to 30, 
which we don't have to use in because this is not, you know, a number within a range is exactly the number 30. If it's exactly 30, then you print out you are correct. If it's in 31 35, you print out your hot. And if it's 36 to 50, you print out your code. And if it's something random that the user put in, like if it's a character or something, we just print out, it doesn't apply. So let's run this. Your codes, okay. Since this is not in a loop, it's not gonna like continually run. Uh, we're gonna talk about loops later on, but uh, every single time we wanna run it, you know, we have to just play it again. So let's try 28. Uh, well, I'm hot, okay. Let's try 33. Oh, I'm hot again. Let's try 49. Your codes, oh man. But now I know the magic number is 30. You are correct. That's cool. Now, if it's a number that, you know, we don't expect, like it's not in the range that we expect, we have the fallback else and we can use the number 99 to, to see this. If we put that, it doesn't apply because it's not within the range that we specified. Obviously we may have cases where, you know, a user puts in a, a letter or something um, and you know we're not you know we're not going over that this is just a, a perfect instance of it and as you guys go on throughout the series there'll be fallback options for that but if it's not within the range that we specified we have the else that will put does not apply so this is a when statement you know this is pretty cool we can have multiple criteria and if a, if a criteria is met then we ha we can do an action based on that and if it doesn't, we can have a fallback that prints out or does something else. All right, so just like how there's an if expression, we also have a when expression. And this will return a value if any of the criteria are passed. So in this case, we're going to create a calculator. I already have some setup code. Uh, we have two prompts that will let the user know to pick a number uh, or integer to be specific. Um, and this is just a fallback just in case no number is, you know, picked. This is called the Elvis operator. We're going to talk about it later on. Um, but, you know, there's also other things that need to be checked. Like, you know, if the person actually puts a number, which we didn't do here, but we're just going to act like everything is perfect. Uh, and we're just going to put normal numbers. And then we have another prompt that will ask the user to pick an operator, which, you know, we went over all of these operators before, which is just addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. Now we're going to take this operator and we're going to use a wet expression to um, return the value uh, based on the two numbers that the user specified. So to do that, we'll create a variable called answer. And we're going to make this equal to a when expression. So we're going to open up a parentheses. We're going to pass in the operator, open up the body, and then the first criteria that I want to specify is the addition criteria. So we're going to put in a plus. We're going to pass in an arrow to let Kotlin know that this is what we're about to do. This is what we want to return after we do it. So we're going to do a num1 plus num2. So if it's a plus or if the person passes in a plus, then we want to point to this mathematics right here. So num1 plus num2. And it will return the answer of this. We don't even have to put return. It will return this calculation. And the next one we're going to do is we're going to do minus. And then we're going to point to num1 minus num2. And we're going to do multiplication, which is asterisk. And then point to num1 times num two. Then we're gonna do division, which just can also be dangerous because what if the person uses zero as a second number? But we're not doing checks for that. We're just showing a very basic implementation. So we're gonna do num one divided by num two. And then we're gonna do modulus, which will return the remainder if there is one. Um, and then we're gonna do num one modulus num2 they're gonna have else just in case it's none of these and 
we're just gonna print out why she oh yeah we're just gonna uh just return zero that's it and we should be good to go actually let me just print this out to make sure we actually have the right answer so your answer is we're gonna use string template and oh that's spell you're right your answer is and it should be the answer that is storing this I didn't specify a type because of the fact that um, I want to like call it infer it because if we use division it can be a decimal so let's run this and we're just gonna act like a top flight user we're not gonna add any funny business um, but we're just gonna do five another five and I want to multiply it because I want 25 and then boom your answer is 25 now we're gonna run this again we're gonna do five we're gonna do one we want to add this we want you know six boom your answer is six now we want to do ten and we want to do seven because I wanted three so I want to subtract so boom three and one or actually I lost count I think we need two more so we're gonna do division we're gonna do 24 and six let's do division boom four and then we have module list I want to do five and five so this should return zero because it shouldn't be a remainder boom now let's let's play uh, the funny user a little bit let's do four and let's do two well, for the operator I just want to act funny let me put a little and your answer is zero we're not we don't we don't play that funny business so that's how you can use when to make a calculator this is a very basic implementation of it obviously there's some things that will cause this thing to wreak havoc like you know if I were to divide you know four by zero that would destroy this thing but you know obviously the more you go on the more you guys will learn um, more ways to make sure that does not happen so let's continue on but this is a one expression